So we're going to look at the solar thermal schematic for our uh, Stiebel L-Trans system that we're going to put on here. So let's read the schematic real quick and see how fluid actually flows through our system. Any water that comes back into the system is going to be considered the hot water. So we always put pressure reducing valve that's up on the solar thermal up on the very top there. And then I'm going to come in and this will be the way the hot water comes in to the tank. So here is what happens. Notice the hot water comes in on the top side and it leaves, we'll call that the cold side, on the bottom. And the reason we want that differential is we want the hot water on the top and we want the cold water that's exiting that's really not cold but considering what we have here hot water rises we want a thermal difference between the two so what we want is to try to cause a stratification of the water between these two layers so keeping the hot water on the top side of that coil having the cold water leave is what we want and the reason we want it to be a little bit colder is because this water is still screaming hot but compared to the water coming in from the solar collectors up on say the roof it's going to be markedly cooler so we always put our pump, the expansion tank, our valves, our fills, all of this stuff right here always is going to be on the cold side or colder side as it's called. Hot water comes into the top, cold water comes out of the bottom. So we could say this should be lukewarm water so it's warmer but it's not quite hot but it's definitely not cold water that we would think of. And so in a video past we talked about the expansion tank sizing and notice that the expansion tank size here was that X-Troll X-15 size and then what we had was we actually said and it's difficult to see on the schematic but we are actually leaving the fill pressure at actually 45 psi so that's what the bladder is going to show you there's a disconnect valve here that the reason you have that disconnect valve there is if that bladder ever goes bad in the expansion tank I can take it out there's a couple reasons we do what we do for this whole schematic and let's give a quick look and see what happens we fill our solar thermal system with water it's a closed loop system so the water comes in through our ball valve right here. So ball valve right here is we can close that off if I ever had to do some repair to the system. Hot water comes in, it generally gets colder on the way that it leaves. I now go out. If I had a ball valve here, this would be part of the fill tank. So I can fill, there's a couple points to fill. And the reason we put fill valves here, here, right there is so that I can isolate a problem. If and when that pump fails, I can shut these two valves off. This valve here and that valve there, remove the pump, put a new pump in, and then what I can do is open these two valves. So I open valve on BC1 and then this downward valve body right there. Then what I can do is I can add fluid with this valve closed. So this valve is still closed. I can fill water in, fill this void, have it come through, and then drain. Now I have a filled system so I don't have to adjust the rest of my solar thermal system if I have a pump that needs to be replaced. And the same is true with the rest of my components. If I needed to do the same for my expansion tank, I could have done it that way. There are a variety of means that I can put in this place to show how to fill up without affecting the rest of the system. I have cold water that is now coming out of my system up through my valve body through my flow meter that flows through the drain valve is closed. The water flows through this valve from my pump. There's a three-speed pump. We'll talk about pump speeds when we get to the pumps. We flow out to this way. At the same time, pressure is equal all throughout the system, and we're going to flow into this expansion tank. Remember that we were somewhere near that 11 to 12-gallon range setting because what that expansion tank does is as it gets hotter, that expansion tank is going to allow fluid to push that bladder down. More water stays in there, and we can keep our system at a set pressure. That fluid still flows through at the same time through these manifolds that are up top and in this system it's a series based system fluid comes in series 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 and then this is the event that I could bleed out air at this point but that should not affect my circuit right at this point it comes out and I'm going to draw it in red even though it should be red up here just for arrow's sake and it comes back down that is the closed loop system that we have on this circuit the rest of this is some manifolds that we're going to look at in the tank when you deal with municipal water supplies or any time there is potable water, and potable water means water that you can drink, you always have to have a double isolation from it. So that should be a double line. So the glycol system comes into this loop that's closed. The hot water 
that you would run into your hot water tank comes from this upper loop. That means there are two physical barriers that is going to keep that propylene glycol out of our drinking water, and that would be these two coils. So that's a double wall, and then we have water then that's filling this storage. So that's what we have here. What we want is thermal stratification, so the hotter water rises, and notice the hottest water is up to here. So what we want is the hottest water is up here. We want to bring the coldest water in to where it's going to feel the hottest water of the tank. And then by the time it goes through, yes, it's getting cooler temperature-wise, but the output right here for the domestic hot water is actually going to be warmer. That is the most efficient system. So it's key to know hot water comes in at this point, it leaves this point. Water into our system comes in the highest point, and it flows to the rest of the house at this low point. And that gives us the best diversification of that water. There's a couple things that we do here to fill this water up. So the domestic water supply comes in and it fills this tank up. This valve right here and this mixing valve here is what we've got. So we could go that way or there's another way of doing it and it looks like to me like you have water that comes in and you can have a domestic supply that comes out this way as well. But typically this is the way that we would want to have this is a double isolation. So that's one way of doing it. And then you could have this for some sort of supply for domestic hot water, field supply supplemental hot water. Typically you want two lines and that's what we're seeing there. So I'm not sure if I really fully like the idea of having it sit here, but that's okay. That's part of the plan. But basically we've got hot water out and this is our solar thermal in. And that is just a very quick down and dirty reading of the schematic that we have sitting here.